Okay, let's talk about our patient today. Our patient today is a dentist. Young lady, a preeminent lecturer. The dental hygienist from Bulgaria. Buffalo, New York. Atlanta, Oklahoma, Vancouver, Canada, Boston, Kansas City, San Francisco, Montreal, Munich, Germany, London, and Santa Maria, California. Now we're going to place 14 lumineers, 8 lumineers, 10 lumineers, 6 lumineers, 10, 2, 8, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8 lumineers today on our patient. And now we're not treating teeth anymore. We're treating smiles. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at the transformation from where we started and where we are. Our patient today is an example of that. Today we're just going to be working on natural teeth. Let's talk a little bit about getting ready to do this because in many ways uh, this will seem like a uh, maybe too simple. It's going to be because I have my dental assistant. She makes it simple. When I walk in everything is done for me ahead of time. So be sure you have your staff trained. What we suggest is that you and your staff watch some of the videos that we have available that show you how to place it, how to do surface preparation, and have it to the point where the dental assistant can teach you what to do. Many times I'll ask Lisa, what am I supposed to put on next? You know, I get older, I can't remember everything. I just put things on the teeth. But uh, she's the one that's keeping me posted. What I'd like to do is show you Lisa's setup here. This is just like if you were a surgeon. Uh, they don't want to be looking around for a particular scalpel in the middle of the operation if they can avoid it. So Lisa has prepared all of these lumineers. There's 10 of them we're going to do this morning. And we have 10 porcelain veneers, uh, lumineers to place on her teeth. They're made out of serenade porcelain. Lisa has treated these porcelain veneers with two solutions. One solution is porcelain conditioner and the other is serenade prime. So now at this time, just before we start, they're ready to chemically be bonded to the natural tooth. So, uh, and the rest of the pieces of equipment she has here, you'll see how we use it. And uh, there is something I have to tell you. If you want to know what's critical, the first thing you have to have is four power magnification. And that's extremely important. If this comes off well, and if this looks easy, it'll be because of Lisa. It'll be because of four power magnification. It'll be because of materials. And it'll be because of the sapphire light. Now the sapphire light is a real important part of this because when you see me placing the light on there to get the final set, we're going to have, do 10 veneers, 10 lumineers in about uh, 70 seconds. And the, each one will get, uh, get a five second exposure. Before that, we'll tack, tack them in place with a one second exposure with a two millimeter tip and that allow me to get rid of a lot of the excess to simplify the cleanup. I like to use the Lumineers Impression Material. It's great for crown and bridge. It's also great for giving a very sharp gingival margins. And one of the things that I suggest you do when you send a case in for a Lumineer is you pour the model before you send it in so that you're satisfied with the margins. Now, something that happened that's not on, uh, on the video is Lisa has polished our patient's teeth to get rid of the plaque, but I don't like to use pumice. Pumice pushes around that organic material. What I, which Lisa uses, and what I like to have them use is the Lumineers porcelain polishing paste. It will dissolve the organic matrix that's around uh, on the tooth, and all you do with pumice is push it around. So it has a nice, pleasant taste. It's the same material that we use to put the final polish on, on in the finishing. I can't stress this enough, and I'll probably mention it again today. All this says is, let's keep it simple. And the rule of 55 has to do with the fact that we have five surfaces we can bond to. Enamel, dentin, porcelain, metal, and old composite and acrylic. Your most reliable bonding will be enamel and porcelain. Your next will be dentin and composite. 
and last will be metal. You can get good bonds to metal with the materials that are available, and we won't talk about them today since I won't be doing it. But the other part of the rule of 55 is there's five surfaces and there's five steps. And let's talk about those steps. We're going to do surface preparation. Surface preparation is critical. Then we're going to bond to that surface. That's critical. Then we're going to finish. That's critical. As a matter of fact, all the time that I save in not doing preparations, I'll invest a little bit of that time in finishing the case. Because when I try them in without any margins and without preparations and a patient looks at it, they never look as good as they will look when they're finished. So we'll talk about that. So I'll invest an extra 20 minutes to an hour in finishing that uh, I may not invest if I had done the traditional technique where we just put them in and flick the excess off. Uh, and then after we've done the finishing, we check the occlusion. And occlusion causes more luminaires and more teeth to fracture than anything else when it isn't compensated for. So I'll talk about occlusion again a little bit later. Be sure you ask me if I don't. How do you know? How do you protect them to use mouth guards and all that? And then uh, the, the last step is you step back from the patient. Because when I'm working on the patient and I'm looking at teeth, I lose sight of how she looks. But look look how nice those teeth look. And when I put these on, I found that I was amazed at how much nicer her smile looked. And so uh, she's our patient today. Okay. So that's enough of the background. And uh, let's take a look at her teeth up close now in the video. And we're going to get started. Close. Okay. And she really has nice teeth, perfect occlusion, okay? And the first thing I'm going to do is something that really simplifies the process a lot. I'm going to use Pain On Dental Dam. And uh, I'm going to place that on the lingual side. And what I'm doing is putting it in the interproximal embrasures so that when I put the ultrabond on, it will have paint on dental dam there. It's blue, so I won't get it mixed up with my ultrabond. And when you put this on, you got to be sure that if you have diastomas, that it doesn't come through to the labial side. We'll take about one inch from the surface, give it a three second blast, and close your eyes. Now the best way to protect your eyes is to close them. So I place the light, close your eyes, Close your eyes. Now I take the Explorer and I'll test this just to see if there's any areas that aren't set yet. Can you see that? So now on the lingual side, we have placed a little bit of paint on dental dam, just like we use on uh, when we're doing chair side bleaching to protect the gingival tissue. And that will simplify the finishing process. Okay, so now the next step is we're going to reduce surface preparation on enamel. You can keep your mouth open there. Now I'm using etch and seal. Medium viscosity, and the reason I like etch and seal is I put a little dab on the teeth. It doesn't run all over. And then I push it. Now etch and seal I like to use because it contains aluminum oxalate and that seals the dentinal tubules when you're etching dentin. We'll wash this off now. I'm placing tenure AB on here. Why do I like tenure AB? I like tenure AB because it's not light dependent. It bonds to all composites. And I know I'm going to get a good strong bond with it. And it's simple to apply. I'll tell you what I don't do 
with Lumineers. Which tooth is this? Left central. Left central. We're putting the left central on with nothing. When you look at that, you can see we're lengthening her teeth a little bit. You can always modify it. And then we're taking her right central. Correct. And what shade is this? It's B0. B0? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so let's take a look at these when they're the same shade. This one is a different shade than the left central. Why? There's a thing called the index of refraction. Light travels through a medium as long as you don't exceed what they call a critical angle. And when you go from resin to tooth to porcelain, you never exceed the critical angle. So that's what this is going to look like. But when you try these in with nothing, uh, and I wouldn't like to use water because then it picks up the color of the un uh, tooth underneath. We want to pick up the color of the ultra-bond try-in paste. So when you exceed the critical angle, then the light stops traveling. So what you're seeing on the left central is what the uh, etched surface looks like dry. And it gives you always a very <coughs> opaque white shade. White We're going to mix uh, half white and half B0. And then we'll let the patient select the shade. When we put these on, I'll let the patient look at two shades. If I put all of the luminaires on, and I shouldn't say I never let them look at it, but I don't like to, because the first thing people look at is what's wrong. So we'll take a little bit of this off. And now we'll let the patient take a look at the shade. And so which one would you like? You point to the tooth. Which one do you want? That one? Mm -hmm. That's okay. If that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you notice I only put two in, and the patients are a little bit apprehensive, but we've satisfied their need for participating in approval. And we were only looking at the shade. We weren't looking at all of the shape of these things. And then we come back with tenure S. So what we're doing here is removing the Try and paste with the tenure S. Which tooth? Right central. Right central. Okay. And we just gently place these. Now, if Lisa doesn't get all the ultra bond try and paste out, Left central. the tenure S will cause it to set. It's a backup system. So you don't have to put try and paste in and then remove it. And you don't want to do the try in with tenure S on the teeth. Tenure S is designed to be a resin that enhances the bond. Left lateral. Left lateral. Okay. And the reason I don't like to try them all in is when you haven't removed tooth structure, all these embrasures are closed. They're not open as much as they would Left be after cuspid. they're finished. Left central? Cuspid. Left cuspid? Okay. And Lisa always calls out the name of the lumineer for which tooth rather than a tooth number. And then what we're going to do is we're using Ultrabond Plus to bond this. Ultrabond Plus is an ADA Type 2 restorative. It's light cured, and so it is going to seal your margins. So it's the Tenure and the Ultrabond Plus that will give you a stress-resistant, non-microleaking aesthetic restoration. And the Lumineer is put on there as a matrix that's left with that restoration to protect it against wear, stain, and gives beauty to everything. Now the next thing I'm going to do is remove a lot of this excess, but not all of it. And we're going to fix these in place with a one second spot cure in the middle of each tooth. Close your eyes. I don't like to use the system of curing the whole resin halfway because you don't get complete conversion when you do that. Close your eyes. So by going to each tooth and giving it one second in the middle, I will spot it in place. Now notice I didn't spot the right central. And the reason is that 
I don't want to partially cure the tooth where I still have to put one luminaire next to it. So I always stay one tooth distal to the most recent tooth that I put in. You want to see excess coming out everywhere. Because when you don't have excess, you don't know if you have just the right amount or you have a void. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And when I place this two millimeter tip on for one second, close your eyes. As I place it, I want to see excess ooze out just a little bit. And now we're taking the excess off here. And with the Ultrabond being light cured, it has a kicker in it. And it's, it will cure in about 10 or 20 minutes. Now I'm wiping off the excess on the lingual. And even if I don't get the light to it, the tenor S is setting some of the Ultrabond. So you can see I've removed most of the excess. I'll take a little bit off here. Get a better view here. And now we're going to take and apply a five second cure to each tooth. So now the next step is what? Finishing. I'm using a Sure 349 instrument here. It's really handy. I use it primarily to remove the resin from the surface of the porcelain. Now you see how we're lifting off the uh, paint on dental dam. You can tell it's blue in there. Can you see that? So let's take a good look here. Look how nice that gingival area looks. I don't have to fool around with that. Now I'm using a Sure 349 instrument here. This is an orthodontic instrument that won't scratch glazed porcelain. That's why I use it. All of these materials that I'm using now for finishing are in a kit called Luminaire's Finishing Kit. And you'll notice that when I'm scraping, and this could be done by a hygienist, what I'm doing right now could be done by a hygienist or an RDA, expanded duty, because why? We're not taking anything off the natural teeth, and it's something they can do if they have a good set of hands. And some of them have very good sets of hands. But you never want to use a hygienist scaling instrument because it'll scratch the porcelain. Now this looks like this comes off pretty hard, and it does because the surface was dry. We bonded to it, but it does come off. Now I'm taking a 12-fluted burr, and uh, I'm going in between the margins and the interproximals, and I want to remove all of the ultrabond. Now the reason I'm using a 12-fluted burr is I'm not touching tooth structure. I never use carbide burrs on natural tooth structure. Now as I get this water, you never want to put a burr or a diamond on porcelain dry because it'll create heat, and that heat will cause it to fracture. So all I'm attempting to do right now is to remove the composite and not the porcelain. And I tell my patients if they feel anything uncomfortable to be sure to raise their left hand. Now I'm using a football shaped diamond and uh, what we're going to do on this is we're going to blend on the lingual side all of the ultrabond and all the porcelain together. They're going to be one solid mass. This is beginning to look pretty nice. And what I'm doing in here right now 
is removing all of the ultrabond on the lingual side because I'm I've just got one solid mass of two structure. Okay. I've got some ultrabond on the occlusals of those bicuspids and a little bit on the lingual. And most of that will be apparent after uh, I check the occlusion. But now I'm using a needle nose diamond here. And remember, we're in the process of taking out the interproximal ultrabond. And before we open those contacts, we want to remove all of the ultrabond. And you don't have to do all the finishing today. As a matter of fact, what I like to do is only keep the patient in a chair for maybe an hour or an hour and a half and let them go home. Because by then we will have achieved a dramatic change in their appearance. They're not really fatigued yet. And they're so happy with the cosmetic change 99% of the time. And I'm just removing the ultrabond on the lingual side. And then we'll go to the labial side next. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go on the labial side and open these embrasures. Well, now we've come to the next stage. We're going to open some contacts. So we're going to go through and open these contacts with the thing called a seri saw. And I save a lot of this for the second visit. And I'll tell you why. Patients come in on the second visit, and almost always they're so grateful they're just so pleased that they got the dramatic change and they didn't have to go through all of these complicated procedures. I'm using a seri sander now. This is a safe sided diamond disc and we go in the interproximals and we take out the excess ultra bond because when you cut through it Let's see if I can get a little bit more in here. And all I can tell you is that I think all those other procedures, if you and the patient together agree on doing them, and they know that they could get it this way, then you should do them. So it isn't that I want to restrict the way you practice. I want to give you the opportunity to treat some of those patients that normally you wouldn't treat. close. Grind your teeth around. Look how nice those look. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Open. And I guess I did it about the same length of time we would chair side bleach. Now let's take a look and see what we've got down here. Let's see. Now we got some high spots on that bicuspid. Now that means we still have some ultrabond up there. We got ultrabond here. Oop, pop that off. Good. Pop that off. And so you need to have harmonious occlusion. So I'm going to take off with my football shaped diamond some of these high spots and try to blend it all off. A lot of times I won't get all the ultrabond off on the placement visit because the ultrabond and the tooth blend together so well in color. So, let's see. Patient's been in the chair, I don't know what, hour and 15 minutes. I've been doing a lot of talking. And now I try to get them out of the chair within an hour and a half. Now when she comes back next week and she starts telling me, you got a 
uh, use these probing questions. Tell me how your family liked it. Did anybody notice? And he said, well, people said there's something different about me. Or have I lost weight? Or do I look better? Or something. And uh, then you check over things. You can go back and you can open the contacts you didn't open. Uh, one, one of the things I didn't show you, and I'm so glad that I just thought about this. But as I go down here, guess what? I got a shoulder here, right? If I didn't grind away tooth structure, I'm creating a shoulder. And so what we're going to use here is an ultra fine diamond, and we're going to contour these gingival margins, and then repolish them with a 30 fluted burr. And I don't get all the shoulders off on the placement visit. I could, but I don't. But what I'm doing is I'm taking these shoulders, and I'll just do it on a couple of teeth, because, you know, you can have the patient back for two or three visits afterwards to do more refining. And then after you use a needle nose diamond, then you use a 30 fluted burr. Now, what we're going to do here is I want to show you what we can do. Okay, now we'll take the diamond polishing paste. So you go in there, just grind that around. Grind your teeth all over, forward and back. Open. Okay, well there we are. We've adjusted it. We don't have any tips on here. This is what you want to look out for, blue tips on there that would create a, uh, a fracture uh, proneness. Close. See that? Back. And then on our subsequent visit, we can make more changes. And we can do her lowers. I'll show you how to handle the lowers. Okay, open. Very good. Next. Okay, so why did I choose to get Lumineers? It was, it was a recommendation of my dentist. And I was just going in for my regular checkup. And he was telling me about this product called Lumineers. And he said, Laura, you'd be a great candidate for it. You know, you have a really good smile. And so I talked to some people who had Lumineers, talked to them about the process. It, it, it indeed was painless. It was short. You know, it, it didn't take any great time out of their life. And the results were amazing. I mean, especially for some people that I've seen who had like chipped teeth or a lot of discoloration, totally changed their outlook and their perspective and how they felt about themselves. And so, um, you know, the more research I did on it and the more that I saw, I just was like, I want to do this. So um, after I heard about the Luminear product and the process of doing it, you know, of course, in, in looking at it, you know, I had to look at the alternative and... I had to look at the, the traditional way of doing it and see those pictures and the whole process of doing it. And there was no way I would go through something like that because for one, my smile was okay. You know, it wasn't, it would not be worth anything of what a traditional process would be like. I would highly recommend Lumineers to any of my friends and especially, you know, both scenarios. It, it's um, for anybody who wants to do an enhancement to how they look or do a dramatic process because their teeth are chipped or discolored or anything, um, I would definitely recommend them to my dentist or any dentist who does Lumineer so that they could see that they do not have to go through such a painful process as what is traditional to get the desired results. And in my opinion, when I've seen both results, I actually like the Lumineers better because to me, they're more of a reflection of what the natural tooth is. I could not believe how natural I felt. Like, like these were, these are my teeth. You know, these are, these are completely my teeth, but they're just enhanced. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a relatively new process for me. I have, I've only had them for less than a week, but, um, I do find that I, I smile a lot more or if I can, like my husband, I didn't tell my husband that I was going to do this. <laughs> he could not get over it. And, um, 
you know, he just could not believe how natural they looked. And he was thrilled. It was amazing to see the differences um, because all my friends would say, you know, you had a great smile or you had great teeth. But when you lay them side by side, like things I didn't even notice before about my natural teeth is um, they weren't aligned and they, they, they went in a little bit. And that was nothing that I recognized until I had more of a prominent smile. So, you know, to me, Lumineers has brought so much more than I even expected.